Uh, this is going to be a quick video um, demo a feature, a new feature that I just found out about. I went to go check the uh, the Git repository for SimH, you know, favorite emulator here, and discovered that it now supports Slurp uh, network address translation for the emulated systems. So very much like QMU or in VirtualBox, you can have a NATed adapter which I think is just fantastic. So to demo this, I'm going to do uh, OpenBSD um, 5.8 and uh, just do a, a simple port forward here on the SSH port. Uh, much like a virtual box, it goes sets up its own little mini network or a, another one of these network address translation systems which has DHCP, DNS, router all set up for you. What's really great about this is now people who run wireless you, know, you have a laptop, you have you know, uh, Wi-Fi, you can now communicate really easily between your host and guest over the network. Um, this is, uh, I, you know, um, IP only, right? So I think it's TCP, UDP, that's it. So there are some things in VMS that might not work. But uh, so here's my config, and let's see if this works. So we have the uh, listing here, so our gateway, we have our DNS, DHCP, and our redirection here. Let's boot up the CPU. Hopefully we get asked about a language. Did not get asked about a language, okay, no problem. Um, let's boot off the CD. Everything's looking correct at this point. We'll skip that. And we'll just do a, a quick install here and see what we can get. Something descriptive. Yeah, so we got uh, QE0 here. Let's use DHCP and see. Fingers crossed. I haven't tried this before. And wonderful. So it, it comes back with the address I was anticipating. Yeah, we don't want IPv6. And done there. Root password, yes. Um, and let's see, yeah, US Central. RA0 is correct. I should have disabled the other uh, disk devices. Yep. Uh, auto layout works for me. Well, things are going swimmingly. Let's hope the, the network works. So I was able to get the DHCP um, initialized correctly at bound. Um, so I am hopeful. Okay, so... HTTP. Let's give it a try. I uh, don't have a proxy. Okay. Do the, take the defaults here. Okay, base system. We'll continue, yes. Okay, well this is this is absolutely exciting. Um, I this is a great addition to SimH. Um, it it will really add a whole uh, new level of flexibility to the uh, to the emulator. Um, you know, because the real thing we need here is so you can sit in the airport with just your wireless adapter and uh, you know bring up a VMS system on VAX or you know, RSX11 on the PDP, uh, emulated of course. So I'm going to take a break from the video, uh, and go have a drink of water while this uh, chews on its stuff and we'll be back with the boot up and check out the port forwarding. And 
the installation has completed. Uh, so let's see what's next. Uh, set the time. We should do a reboot and then be able to check out if the port forwarding worked. So at least this side of it, so outbound communication, uh, worked just fine. We were able to, to get the install sets off of uh, uh, HTTP, so the, the install server. Um, or, in a, yeah, lack of a better term. And hopefully this won't take but a brief moment longer. Uh, I do forget, though, we have to generate the uh, the keys for uh, SSL keys. But no matter. May have to uh, take another break while that generates. Um, again, you know, we're, we're emulating um, something, and in emulation it's faster than any of the real Vaxen ever made, I think. I think when I last measured it, when it was tuned, this one isn't tuned, but about 40 VUPs, so Vax unit of performance, which is, is pretty steep. Maybe some of the later Vax workstations got there, but I don't know. Boot it up. And seems to be working fine at this stage, but we haven't gotten to the network setting, which is what I'm really interested in here. And uh, PF is up and running. I mean, that is uh, the ultimate goal here is to run your firewall on a emulated vax so yeah we get the offer and we get bound to our correct um, DHCP ID so this works just like slurp elsewhere so you get you know 3 to 14 for your static IP choices and then 15 on for the um, DHCP range, which should be plenty of room uh, for most things. Now, I don't do any any VMS clustering, anything like that. Although it might be something fun to play with, um, but my understanding is you can't do that here because this this is just IP uh, that this can be used for. So it, it does have some limitations. Um, for something like this, it's a, it's a perfect solution. And again, just add that layer of flexibility to uh, the networking in SimH, because I have the, the capability to dedicate an entire uh, interface on one of my machines. It's got five interfaces, uh, five network interfaces. So I can dedicate an entire interface to emulated VAX, for instance. But if you're on a laptop, playing around, you're traveling, you may not have that capability. So this is a very, very nice addition um, to that. Um, so another thing uh, that the multiple interfaces is nice. So hopefully I got my new network switch in the mail soon because I'm out of network ports, but is to set up a separate network. So it'll be on the same physical switch, but a, a separate network in terms of IP space. Uh, to do NFS over. One of the reasons there is for the Sun machines to default the NFS traffic to go on my faster interfaces. So on the uh, on the gigabits on the Sun Blade and the 100 megabit on the Spark Station 10. Because um, I don't know, maybe if anyone knows a way to do it, leave a comment here below if there's a way to separate NFS and not have it bind to um, bind everywhere. So, could, and that would be under Solaris. Uh, let's see. Hopefully, this will be uh, this will be wrapping up soon with the key generation. So, SimH, it's it's been moved to like a you know a Git project. 
really um, really showing some some growth. There's been a lot of great improvements since it's been moved there and more fully open um, open source development. So I am I am excited to see what some of the next developments are here. Uh, don't know a whole lot. Let's look at some of the other other features while I have this up. So a few different types of VAX. So you got uh, you know uh, RT VAX, and you get some micro VAX and VAX station. Um, different types of VAX, and um, get some new platform support. Um, I don't have anything that runs HP UX or AIX, although I wish I had some uh, power AIX stuff. Uh, maybe that maybe that's for for another another day on eBay is to get some old power PC IBM gear. It's nice. Uh it's just in the in the nineties when, you know, the the heyday of the workstation, if I could have my choice, it would have been SGI first at that time, then Sun, then probably digital, and then IBM, and then HP. HP being kind of at the bottom of the list of the big workstation players. Um, looking back, it probably should have been Sun first, SGI second, or Sun first, IBM second, SGI third. Um, SGIs were goofy, and because I was using them a lot at the time, late 90s, um, I didn't notice how weird they were. And, you know, Irix is a dead end, uh, which is incredibly sad. It had some nice features. Um, from the the desktop environment their 4d window manager was really impressive um, and the the video and audio capabilities you got were also very impressive so even something that was stock on like an o2 um, was was a very impressive video setup and a lot snappier so even though like i said the lower end workstation a lot snappier and even a, a mid-range sun workstation so they're accelerated uh, graphics were better, but the Sun workstations ultimately were. You know, Spark was a better platform than the MIPS uh, in many regards, and Solaris was a better operating system than Irix, and has proved that. Um, so, the demise of SGI is, is interesting, and I think partly driven by the move. I mean, their their niches were, you know, the graphics, video, film forecasting when when PC started to take over in that space there really just wasn't the demand there anymore and obviously they're still around and they do you know, supercomputing things like that but it's all regular old gear running Linux there's nothing nothing special about it anymore and again Sun doesn't make workstations anymore IBM doesn't obviously now I did I did try out a demo of some IBM gear a while ago, I think the Power 7 or Power 8, and compared to the Intel stuff, it was it was fast, and the virtualization features were impressive, so I don't think I can afford any relatively recent uh, IBM Power stuff on eBay, but maybe an old workstation with AIX. Uh, I did work on a, a few of the old AIX workstations, and they were, they were good. Um, I liked them again not as defined graphical workstation as something like a like a spark station or one of the SGI machines but also more to the graphical workstation side than an an alpha station so it would be interesting to see uh what some of those later era IBM workstations were I think 96 97 was the last time I saw an, an IBM, you know, the RS6000 series in action. And then obviously, you know, even at my current company, some people still have start Spark workstations. Um, you know, the later ones with the Ultra 45s, I think. So some of the, the really later era workstations. Sorry about the dog barking there. So I'm going to, I'm just droning at this point. So while this is building its keys, I'm going to go get a snack and I'll be back. And finally, uh, the SSH keys are generated. We're booted up. We're at a prompt. 
Let's log in here on the console. And QE0 is up. And we've got the correct IPv4 address. Uh, and we have the correct gateway here. Uh, so let's do an NS lookup, obviously. So the D DHCP got the address, D the slurp DNS, and the gateway are working. So now let's see if that port forwarding was working. And the port forwarding works a treat. So this is this is nice. I like this. What a great new feature. So I will wrap this up now because this has gone on long enough. Um, just to kind of talk about a new feature here and bring up OpenBSD. Um, but you did get to hear me rant for a few minutes about workstations. Um, it just makes me sad that the concept of a workstation, I mean a real workstation, a Unix workstation, has disappeared where you had high-end hardware and they cost fifteen thousand dollars and uh, that's now no longer a thing uh, workstations still exist um, you know you can get something like a dual socket Xeon PC type workstation and run Linux or Solaris or BSD on it and you sort of have a Unix workstation but it's not the same so on that sad note um, hope this was informative uh, check out the latest and greatest at the SimH Git repository.